Got it. You're muted. All right, how do you sign up? Nope. You've got to turn your volume off. Like you have to turn it off. I did. It's not. Okay, do it from down here. This the broadcast. I think, well, no, it is actually, I think so. This is broadcast. Yeah, this is broadcast. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the new webinar on um, the how to move out in the spring closing process here at UAB. I want to take a few minutes and walk you through some of the key things to know about this particular presentation and um, how to use everything related to Zoom. So to quickly get us started, I'm going to try to bring up the correct presentation. So give me one very quick second. Technology. Um, There we go. This should work for us now. Okay, so just a few things about using this particular presentation just before I turn it over to Dennis from University uh, from Residence Life to talk you through everything. I want to show you how to utilize this particular presentation. Of th this is the first time that you are um, joining us on a webinar. So first things first, um, when you see uh, if you're having any problems with hearing me at all, if you were to click on the lower section of your presentation um, down here at the bottom that says audio settings, then you should pop up and get something that looks like this to allow you to change the volume settings around. However, if you're still continuing to have problems, you're also able to call in for the presentation. Um, in the original invite when you registered, it would have also given you a call in number that will allow you to hear everything that is happening on the presentation, but not necessarily um, be able to, um, you can hear it through the phone and then see it on your computer. The next thing to know is, apparently my system skipped around me a little bit. Okay. Why? So something's happened there. Okay. Um, so down here in the bottom, I apologize for the jumping there, are these three things called chat, raise hand, and question and function, question, the Q&A. The biggest thing for you to know is this Q&A factor right here. Um, the reason that is going to be how we communicate. If you have any questions for Dennis or anyone else at any point in time, please type in your question there um, to make sure that it is... Um, that, that way we can see it. And the nice with the reason we want you to put it in the Q&A function is once you do that, when you once you type in your question, and unfortunately I don't have an example to show you, once you type in a question though, once it pops up at the top, a little thumbs up icon will come up below an, a question, um, similar to the like icon on Facebook or other things. And if you were to like a question, if someone were to ask a question that is very similar to what you would like to have asked, if you just hit that thumbs up button, then what it does, instead of you having to retype that, get that same question, um, it pushes it up higher in our queue so that we see it sooner. So if there are multiple questions coming in where there is one question that is being liked by many people, then that tells us on our side that this is something that we definitely need to answer. Um, and so it just pushes it up to the very top to say, make sure you pay attention to this particular presentation. Um, so please note to do that at any point in time. If you're joining us from the Facebook Live presentation, if you just want to type your notes into the, um, the Q&A side there, that will, um, we'll be able to, we're monitoring both sections of both Facebook Live as well as the Zoom webinar presentation. But with that being said, I want to go ahead and turn it over to Dennis Scott. He is our um, Assistant Director for Residence Life here at UAB. So he works with your students and what it means to live in the residence halls and everything else all the time um, with, with your students. So I want to make sure that he is able to share with you best and successful ways to ensure that your student um, 
is able to, to successfully move out of the residence hall and what does that mean and what does that look like for everybody, et cetera. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to Dennis Scott. Hello, good afternoon. This is uh, Dennis Scott. So my name is Dennis Scott. UAD. Um, and today I will be going over some information specifically regarding um, how to successfully um, move out of the residence halls. Um, and so I know there may be a number of questions. Um, and so hopefully I've prepared a um, presentation that will allow you to um, have some some ease uh, with moving out. And so uh, we will go ahead and get started. As always, technology was being a little bit behind us, um, so I think we should be um, ready to go again. Okay, um, so by now, um, your student should have um, already attended a mandatory floor meeting. Um, and so this is the meeting where um, all of our RAs have a meeting to go over all the tips and tricks to move out successfully um, in the residence hall. Um, and so we do say that they are mandatory because we want to ensure that um, your student has all the information and correct information regarding um, successfully um, checking out of the residence halls. During that meeting, there are a number of policies and procedures um, that the staff go over to make sure that while it can be a hectic time of the year, we want to make sure is a very smooth checkout process. Um, if your student has any specific questions, comments, or concerns, um, they can follow up with their respective resident assistant or um, the residence life coordinator of the respective building, and they can answer any questions, or if they were not able to make the meeting, um, they can follow up and ask questions that may be pertinent to them. Um, something to note is that the residence halls close um, for the spring 2019 semester at noon on Saturday, April 27th. Um, and so one thing that's unique about um, UAB and our housing and residence life program is that um, while the halls close for an academic year or term, we technically never like 100% close. And so we have some students that will be um, transitioning over to summer school housing and two of our residence halls, which I will go over um, in a few moments. But um, if your son or daughter is not um, going to be enrolled in any um, summer school courses, um, the day to be out of the residence hall is noon on Saturday, April 27th. Um, so we have two options for um, checkouts. Um, and so the first option is the traditional um, checkout option. Okay. Um, so with the traditional checkout option, this is um, the best way that we encourage students to check out of the residence hall. It is um, an opportunity uh, for your student to real-time checkout um, with their RA, um, and there's a few steps that they will need to follow. Um, so the first one is to sign up for a checkout appointment at least 24 hours in advance, so that way there's ample time for um, your student to make sure that all of their items are packed up in their room and the RA has a kind of a schedule of who's checking in or excuse me, who's checking out um, of the respective residence hall. Um, and so some tips to step two is before the checkout appointment is to make sure that the following things occur. Um, remove all of their personal belongings. So that's behind the dresser, that's behind the refrigerator, that's in the drawers, the kitchens, the cabinets, all of those things, make sure that there's nothing left behind. Um, also something that's really important is that they have an understanding of who is cleaning the room, the bathroom, or the suite, including appliances um, and other cabinets in the space. And so we do have um, the infamous closing agreement where we have students sit down and say, I'm going to take care of cleaning this, you're going to take care of cleaning that, so that way the person that's leaving last doesn't get stuck with cleaning um, the refrigerator from all um, the uh, 
things that happen. Um, so that way is very clear um, with who's responsible for what. Um, and so it should be clean from the, the first time a student checks out and also the last student if you're in a suite. Um, and then it's important to be prepared to turn in your room and uh, mailbox key at the time of checkout. Um, and so that's important so that way um, we can get those keys turned back over um, to camps and conferences because those will be rolling immediately following um, the end of the semester. And then the most important thing is just to be in your room at your scheduled time of appointment. Um, this makes sure that the RA is prepped and ready to go and they have all the materials um, for a successful checkout. Uh, we do recognize that sometimes things happen. You know, you may be running a behind schedule. Um, simply communicating that to the RA, say, hey, like I may be a little bit late, five minutes or whatever the case may be, just so that way they're not um, going up to the room and you're maybe still taking another load of things to the car. Um, so we want to make sure that that, you know, um, while there's several students checking out, um, that's your time um, as far as checking out. And so if you're curious about the time frame for how long that checkout takes um, place, it may be 10 to 15 minutes. It just depends. You know, we want to make sure that we're being very thorough um, when we're checking the space to make sure there's any potential damages, but also making sure that they forget that um, cell phone charger that they may forget um, because they forgot that it was under the bed. Um, and so we want to make sure that they have ample time for that. Option two is an express checkout. Um, and so this is like, you know, maybe if they're like, hey, like I forgot that I have these things to do and I don't have time to sign up um, with the traditional checkout. Um, this is an opportunity that may uh, work for you in your schedule and traveling. Um, so the thing to note with this is that the resident waives their right to dispute any damage or cleaning charges. Um, and so it's important that they recognize that if you do that express option, um, you won't have a live RA that's there to check them out of the space. Um, and so by so filling out a form that's available at the front desk, they are waiving their right to any damages or charges, potential damages and charges in that space. Um, and so it's really simple. Um, the resident um, must have their room clean and keys returned before departing. Um, and then what will happen is within 24 hours, a staff member will go back to that space and check that space out as if it was like option one, which is a traditional checkout. Um, so there are a number of steps that have to take place if you decide to go with an express checkout option. Um, the first is to sign up for an express checkout um, at the front desk of the respective residence hall. And this just lets the staff know that there's going to be an express checkout that they're going to need to do um, later that day or the next day. Um, and that way they can give that um, student the envelope that will place their keys um, in um, when they are ready to leave. Um, and again, step two, uh, remove all personal belongings and trash um, from the room. And so we want to make sure that the room is just like it was um, when your student moved in in August. Um, again, as always, we want to make sure that we have um, an understanding of cleaning. Um, and so making sure that the room, bathroom, and suite, all appliances um, are clean per the cleaning agreement um, that the students have signed regarding who's going to be responsible for what in the space. Um, and it's important to um, close the blinds, turn off all the lights, and close any windows and doors to ensure that they are locked. Um, and so when the staff goes back to do their walkthrough, they will also lock the door if the student inadvertently forgot to lock um, to secure their door. Um, but we also want to make sure that they're closing any windows so that way nothing happens um, in the space. And then step five is to complete the express checkout form um, and then turn that form and the room key and mailbox key to the resident's um, front desk and they will process that information and then the staff again uh, will go back and check that space to make sure that there aren't any damages um, and there's no lost items or belongings in the space. So again, this is the express checkout option. So if you're kind of in a pinch and you don't have time to sign up for uh, that actual time, then this would be an option for you. Do I need to pause there? Oh, there is, okay. Oh, it's about how damages are handled. Sure. Um, I'll go ahead and talk about damages. So the way that dam yeah, well, I will I will discuss damages a little bit later um, because it is um, one of the hot topic items that I do have on the presentation. So great question. Um, so for late stay exceptions, um, there are a number of reasons why a student may um, request to stay late um, in the respective residence halls. And so as you see, there's a number of summer sessions. Um, so there's a summer session 14 week. There's a summer session 
May session, and then there's the summer session A. Um, and also your um, son or daughter may be participating in the band for commencement, um, or they may be working as a conference assistant um, during the summer um, within Housing and Residence Life, or um, if there's a student athlete that's staying for competition. Um, and so those are typically some of the um, examples of why a student may request to stay late. Um, and those forms were due, I believe, either yesterday or this morning. Um, and so what happens is all those students that are requesting to stay stay late, um, fill out that form and the ROC will look to determine um, based upon when that student is wanting to stay late, um, is that, if that's something that will work um, based upon potentially um, if that space is going to be utilized for summer school. Um, and so those conversations will happen with the ROC and then the ROC, um, Residence Life Coordinator will follow back up uh, with your student about you've been approved um, to stay to X date, X time. Um, and so these, this is a, a good information for you to know. So that way, if your son or daughter is staying here for summer, um, we have a summer transition period um, that will occur um, and they will be communicated with that date and time of that transition looks like if they're staying for summer school. So that way they don't have to leave um, their residence hall and then come back because it's a very quick turnaround time. Um, so we do have a number of common items that are left behind, and so we really want to make sure that um, encourage your student um, and other folks that assist them with move out um, to do a deep check to make sure that the following items are not left behind. Um, cell phone chargers are the number one things that are left behind. They get stuck behind a dresser or a drawer or the bed under the fridge. And so we want to make sure that you grab all of your Android and iPhone chargers um, when you leave. Um, clothing items is another big one. Sometimes we forget that we put socks in that drawer in the bottom right. Um, and so what we will do when we have students check out is open those drawers to make sure that we um, have all of those items out um, so that way you don't have your favorite pair of socks that get left um, in the space. Um, also, it's important to make sure you take any medications that you may have, um, medicine bottles that you may need refills or whatever the case may be um, to make sure that you grab those items. Um, surprisingly, we do have a number of students that inadvertently leave their textbooks. Um, and so we want to make sure that we, if they pay for those textbooks, we want to make sure that they take them with them um, because they may need those for their upcoming courses and or if they would like to um, sell it back to um, the bookstore. Um, bikes, um, and so we have bike racks outside of the residence halls, and so making sure that, um, that they bring their bikes um, or take their bikes with them when they leave um, because those um, sometimes are inadvertently forgotten, um, and so making sure that they grab their favorite bike. Um, they also will need to take their UAB ID card, um, and so sometimes they forget that it's in the drawer, middle drawer where they've been studying, so I want to make sure that they have their UAB um, ID card, one card. Um, wallets, make sure that they have their wallet um, because they will need that um, as they're traveling either um, to, uh, to an airplane to have their um, passport and other things, so make sure that they have their wallet, and then also the infamous um, computer charger as well. Um, and so making sure that these are some things that we've seen um, that have been left behind um, during closeout time. Um, it's important to note that items left behind um, in the space will be bagged and tagged and kept for 14 days. Um, and then after 14 days, those items will be donated. Um, what we do have a what we do have is a opportunity um, for us to email students of the space to say, hey, these are the items that were left behind. Um, a, are you interested in picking them up? Or B, do you want to have them um, donated? Um, and so we will try to do our best to communicate with the student. That is phone and email. Um, and per the Alabama state law, we only are required to keep those items for 14 days. And then after that time, then those items are turned over um, to um, for donations at a local charity. Um, and so to, to be clear on the items that we're bagging and tagging, um, we will not be bagging and tagging like a box of Lucky Charms that just happened to be left, but we're really thinking like clothes, textbooks and some of those items um, to make sure that students have an opportunity to come back and get those items because things happen and you may have inadvertently forgot to pick up those items um, when you were checking out. 
Um, and just some friendly reminders, um, speaking to um, someone's question about damages and charges, um, it is important to know that RAs do not determine if a student will be charged um, for anything in the space. Um, what will happen is the residence life coordinator, who is a professional staff member, will be the one that will go through and do the final assessment to determine if a student will be charged for a damage or something that was broken in the space. Um, something to note is that it's important to know, again, that RAs do not determine um, that charge. And so they may make a notation on their room condition form, but just because they're making a notation on that form does not mean they will be charged. They're just noting that, hey, when you check into the space, this was in a good condition, but now it's poor. Um, and so they will be able to make that notation and they take pictures. And then the RLC, the Residence Life Coordinator, will do that final walkthrough for all um, damages. Um, once charges are applied to the student their account, they will receive an email um, from residents from the Residence Life Coordinator detailing all charges for the damage and um, cleaning. Um, and so there will be an email to note the date to dispute any charges. And so after a certain point, a student will not be able to contest those charges. Um, so important to note that when that charge goes on for any potential damages, um, that they review their um, email account um, with information and a date to um, appeal that charge. Um, and then those who do express checkout, you again, you are waiving your right to any damages or charges in the space. Um, when the RLC can't determine who's at fault for the damage um, regarding um, cleaning or damages, um, it is split amongst everyone in the space, right? And so if we can't determine who's responsible, and this is why it's important that roommates and suite mates are communicating, hey, like I'm taking care of this, you're taking care of that, we're going to make sure everything is good. Um, if we can't determine that, then everyone equally will be charged um, and split that cost in the room. Um, and then we ask that you discard your trash at the dumpsters located outside of the residence halls. Um, and so because of that, we will be locking our trash rooms um, because the accumulation of trash gets uh, fills up very quick, fairly quickly. But we do have dumpsters that will be out um, specifically in the um, our areas outside of the residence halls. And then um, move out is a hectic time. And so we ask and thank you in advance for your patience and understanding. Um, just like moving day, everyone is looking to move out. Um, and so we want to make sure that um, while it may be a little hot or whatever, just please exude patience as our staff are working as best as they can um, to um, effectively and efficiently um, move your student in it, um, excuse me, out of the residence hall. And so um, we thank you in advance for your patience with um, uh, the checkout process. Um, and some helpful tips, um, again, I cannot stress this enough, please encourage your students to communicate with their roommates and suite mates regarding who is cleaning. Now is the time to have those conversations to avoid any potential cleaning charges. Um, it always happens where there's a misunderstanding or, well, I had to leave early and I couldn't get a chance to clean. Um, there's ample time to encourage your students to please, please, please have those conversations um, so that way everyone is clear and on the same page of um, who's responsible for what. Um, something to also note is that as a department, we will have limited dollies um, available for your checkout. And so we would suggest bringing your own um, as there could be a potential weight. Um, and so we want to make sure that um, we, we, we don't have an influx of dollies, but we also want to encourage you to bring your own. It'll really help your um, checkout process go a little bit smoother if you have your own items um, and you can kind of move at your own pace. And um, we do um, and have we will have donation bins should you want to donate items to a local charity uh, within the Birmingham area. And so we want to make sure that we are giving back to the community. Um, and so that's something that, you know, hey, we really don't need this lamp or we really want to give another item away, you can um, place that in the bins in the lobby. Um, and we do not accept books or um, bedding items for um, the items that we donate to um, Charity for Move Out. So I know that was a lot of information in a short amount of time, and I'm happy to answer any questions regarding Move Out. So the next question that just popped up on this side was, 
um, for mail delivery that potentially comes in after a student uh, has moved out of the residence halls. Will that information, will that mail be forwarded onto a student or how does that process work? Yeah, so great question. So the way that the mail, if my memory serves me correctly, um, if that student has already checked out of the residence hall room and no longer um, clearly in the space and they're not going to be here for the summer, um, it is my understanding we will do a return to sender um, with that. And so um, that makes sure that it goes back to the um, owner. And so it's important to note that we do not do mail forwarding as a part of our checkout process. Um, and so we want to make sure students are checking their mailbox before they leave. Um, and if they're leaving, you know, obviously in the next couple of weeks to not have those items sent to the residence hall um, as the students will be checking out of the residence halls. Um, there is a another question about um, uh, Okay, here several of them coming in. Uh, if they have already uh, set an appointment, it's essentially that the room should just be bare as it was when they moved in. Correct. Yeah. So the room needs to be just the way it was when your son or daughter moved in. So all the items out of the space, um, and that's the way that we like it, nice and clean and tidy. So that makes it easier for the staff to go in and check the space, um, and it makes it easier for the students to go in and kind of do that walkthrough during that time. Okay. Um, here's a question. You, you mentioned very early in the beginning that the last date for students to move out is on um, 27th at noon. Mm -hmm. If that's, the students are also being told that they have 24 hours from their last final. So which actually is the how does that work? Sure. Um, so we have the 24 hour rule um, because we want to make sure that um, students that typically are done with their finals, um, we, we are encouraging them to go ahead and move out of the residence halls. Um, that's not something that we are kind of like firm with. Um, however, if a student is in the residence hall and we do some investigations and we find that they um, are kind of causing some challenges in the residence halls as other students are studying um, and they are not making good choices, we may ask them to leave as their finals have concluded. And so um, nine times out of 10, students are leaving 24 hours after their finals because they're ready to go back home. They're ready to start their summer jobs. Um, but we just have that as a good good thing to note um, so that way students are not just kind of hanging around um, and so we want to make sure that they um, are you know being good students and allowing students to study um, as we have quiet hours that start for students that are still taking finals potentially as late as Friday. What about what is a typical damage or cleaning charge that you can kind of walk give options of what examples of what that would look like? Sure. Um, so it, run, <laughs> it, it runs the gamut. So I would say with cleaning, you know, like we, we, we've we seen where tubs potentially look like, hey, they have not um, been touched in a while. Um, and so we will potentially charge a $25 cleaning fee because we then have to go in and have outside group come in and do some deep cleaning specifically in that space. Also, we have oftentimes um, drip pans. Um, we have to educate our students on what drip pans are. Um, and drip pans obviously are those things in the bottom of the stove that sometimes food get kind of gumped up. And so I believe those, those maybe $20, don't quote me on that, but that is another common item that students are like, I don't want to clean it. Um, and so we have to go in and remove those and replace them. So that way new students coming in. Blinds are another thing that kind of happen. You know, students are, you know, um, doing interesting things, um, uh, bumping into blinds or whatever the case may be. Uh, we have seen a number of blinds uh, that kind of get inadvertently damaged. Um, paint chips is another big thing. Um, students have their posters and they thought that the command strips were going to work best for them and then they take off um, the command strips. And so we want to make sure that, you know, that requires staff to go back in and repaint touch up those items. And so those are just a few items um, that I can share with you. Um, but it's it's always interesting as, as the potential damages are being um, looked at and assessed by not only the residents like coordinator, but our facilities coordinators as well. There's a question about, and you mentioned the, the donation bins that students are able to, to give to for, to go on to Salvation Army or whomever. Um, can students go out and actually show 
shop for those bins? <laughs> no, um, we, <laughs> we strongly encourage um, our students not to kind of, as we call it, dumpster dive or rummaging through items. Um, we also surprisingly have to remind our staff to not do that as well. Um, but no, we encourage students not to go through those items as we are giving back to the greater Birmingham community. However, we do have an interesting concept that we've done for the past couple of years is a, uh, a clean a, clean a, it's like a cleaning library. And so we have students that are like, I have bought so much Kaboom, I want to donate it. So there's like each residence hall will have a table where like it's kind of first come first serve, take what you need, bring what you don't need or whatever. And so if you want to come down and um, bring and donate some Clorox wipes and other small supplies, um, that is an opportunity and students really like that. Again, we want to encourage students to save their cash during move out time. Um, and so that is something that a student came up a few years ago with um, having that cleaning um, cleaning library of just going in and out um, and taking what they need. So but no rummaging through the donation bins. We have a question on Facebook. Do you have someone come in and clean all the rooms before the next residents move in? Yes. Yeah, so we have, um, when all the students check out, um, we do have a third party um, contract vendor that comes in and cleans all the spaces. The only difference is if a student is staying for the summer and one student is already in that space, they will not clean the entire room because we don't know whose stuff is what specifically in that space. Um, so it, if, if, if your son or daughter will be living with us in the summer and let's say there's currently a student in that space, because that student is transitioning to summer school, we will not go in and clean like the common area. We will clean that student's room, but there's no way to determine in the bathroom is this should be discarded or this should be something that um, stays in the space. So that's the only caveat um, regarding cleaning of rooms. If students need another day or two to move out, can they have that time? Um, Yes, um, we ask students to um, communicate, communicate, communicate um, if they need extra time. Uh, we've already surpassed or our time to do late stays has expired, um, but we also recognize that there are some extenuating circumstances. We only ask that the uh, communication come from the student and say, hey, ROC, I would, I'm really in a pickle and I would need or I would like to stay um, additional date um, based upon what that um, situation calls for. Um, because depending upon what's going on and who's going in that space, um, we may be needing that space. And so it's important that the instant they know of that extenuating circumstance, please encourage your student to reach out to their RA or their RLC so that way we can best support them because we don't want to just say no, but we also want to make sure that, you know, they're given enough enough notice and time to be able to work best with them regarding that transition. So this next question actually helps with one of mine too. When does sign up for begin for move out begin for them to start with signing up with their their RA? It has already started. So if your student knows that they want to check out April 25th, they can go to the RA and say, hey, RA, I would like to check out with you on April 25th at noon. Um, and that is as simple as that. So there's um, not a time that it's um, it's already started. Um, and so just, again, communicate, have your um, student communicate with the RA because um, they're anxiously waiting for the students to sign up for checkouts. Um, and if they have any questions, they can stop by the residence hall front desk um, and they can um, support them as well. But you can sign up as early as today. We've been, students have been checking out for the past week or so um, for students that are like, I really am ready to move off campus or move back home and I'm going to just take my finals and commute. So that's very common for some of our students. So, um, for the sign up process is it a how do you how do you try to best ensure that there is availability based on the student schedule versus if you're trying to compete with the RA schedule what is that is it available eight to five eight to ten eight to midnight what what does that kind of look like for students so that they know they have opportunities sure um, so I will say a couple of things um, we all because our students our RAs are also students. We don't want them, you know, checking out students at 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, and so if that happens, we would encourage that student to do the express checkout option um, because that's going to be their best um, option to, to do that checkout um, at that time. 
Um, also, uh, depending upon, because we've already allowing students to go ahead and sign up for a move out time now, um, there's ample time for it to get the prime spots. You know, we, we typically see um, a lot of traffic on Wednesday. Um, and so if you're looking to do anything past Wednesday, it gets a little crazy. Um, and we may say if we have the staff, if we don't have staff available, uh, we may say, hey, um, would you be interested in doing express checkout because our staff is currently backed up for those that have already um, signed up for a time. Um, um, and so we try to work with them as best as we can, but also because we want to give every student that individual attention during checkout so that way they have time to go through the room inspection process. Um, we don't want to rush that, uh, but we also know that while um, the RAs are doing that, you also have things that you need to do. Um, and so we may encourage the express checkout option. Um, it may work best for you. And actually, believe it or not, um, majority of the times the express checkout rooms are actually better because students don't want to be charged for anything. And so we have seen that it works best to the, the student's advantage. Great. And just to re-clarify, because we received an email about something as well, that we know you had wonderful faculty and staff that helped move students into the <laughs> residence hall, um, but they are not going to be there, unfortunately, to help them move out of the hall, correct? That is correct. We will not have those thousand plus volunteers doing move out. And so we encourage you to make it a uh, family bonding event. Um, and so encouraging everyone to come back um, to campus and assist with the move out process, but we will not have any volunteers um, to assist with any move out um, events during this time. Okay, so if, here's a, a potential hypothetical question. If their student happened, is the first to move out in their room mm -hmm. and he is clean, clean as a side in the area, but then his roommate does not do his respective cleaning, um, how did you is the question is then would their son be charged for the room the area of the room that the roommate did not clean it's a good loaded question um <laughs> so we we make notes um on the room condition form at the time that the student checks out of the space um and so we will be able to go back and look and see like if bobby checked out you know today and the room was clean and then two days from now johnny um uh, is checking out and the room is dirty, right? Like in theory, we wouldn't be able to hold Bobby, I'm getting my names <laughs> um, responsible because the room was clean at the time that they moved out of the space. Um, and that's why, um, you know, when we have these closing meetings and we have these cleaning agreements, um, it's always best for the rooms to kind of stay in the condition that they are. But we recognize that that is a, a stretch and a, not a realistic, uh, unrealistic expectation to say that that space is going to be 100% clean and clear um, if someone is checking out a little bit later um, in the week. Um, and so that's why it's important, you know, when we have the conversation about rooming um, cleaning agreements that everyone understands, hey, like I don't want to potentially get charged because you had a gathering, a study, uh, event um, in the space and now the room has been trashed. So uh, we definitely work with students to make sure they're doing their due diligence um, and communicating um, that they um, already um, had that conversation. Um, something else that I also want to make a, a, a note about is also during this time, we do have a number of students that will put in work orders for things that mysteriously um, were uh, broken. Um, and so we, we also will look at the work order list to see, you know, was it, when was the item submitted for potential repair? Um, because unfortunately, we have students that feel like, oh, if I put in a work order, the day before I move out, I potentially won't get charged. And so we want to make sure that, that students know that that's not how it works. Um, by putting in a work order does not exempt you um, from potentially being charged for um, an item in the space. And so we want to make sure that, um, you know, depending upon what it is, um, and we encourage students to take ownership. If I, if I broke the blinds, I should be telling my RA, you can charge me for the blinds. I take responsibility. Um, and they will notate that um, specifically on the RCF. Um, and nine times out of 10, it's been our experience that um, the, the student know who's responsible for the damage. Um, and we don't want to put them in that predicament that they have to. It's not about getting anyone in trouble. It's about holding someone accountable. Um, because when we look back at the RCF, the room condition form, it wasn't like this. So what has happened in the space that now has resulted in a potential damage or charge? 
Um, and then lastly, if a student needs to change their move-in time um, or, and or date, is that something that they can do um, online or, or do they need to receive their RA again? If they need to change, if they've signed up for a time and they need to now change the move-out date or move-out time, oh, how do they change it? Oh, Sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you said move-in. I was like, ugh. I so, out. <laughs> yes. Um, if they want to change it simply, again, as soon as they know that that's going to be an issue, follow back up with the RA to say, hey, I signed up for Tuesday at noon. I really need to move out and extend that time to five o'clock. Um, and just communicating that to the RA so that way they're not waiting around and potentially taking a space away um, from someone else. Yeah. Okay. Let me talk about it. Yeah. yeah um, so there was a question um, specifically in one of the residence halls um, regarding a, um, a flood. Um, and so we have a, we've already contracted a third party company that is going to go in um, and do their deep cleaning of that space. Um, and so we will be in contact and communication with those impacted students um, based upon an incident that occurred on Saturday morning. Um, and so that's something that we are already aware of with regarding those potential things that may be um, damage or ruin based upon that flood. Um, and so I will make sure that the RLC of that building is aware as we have a list of those students and those rooms that were um, impacted with that um, situation from this weekend. Great. Um, and then lastly, what about the commons? Um, since many of our students are, uh, since all of our students living in the residence halls have a meal plan, will the commons remain open through Saturday? I believe it may be on the website, and I was talking to someone in our office. I believe the commons closed the last day of classes, which would be Friday um, at 5, um, is when I think the uh, the commons closed. Um, but don't quote me on that. I believe it is on the dining website. Even if that were to happen, the, resident, the dining facilities in the Hill Student Center are still open and available to students on Saturday as well. So there still are places for students to utilize their um, the, the dragon cash or other things um, across campus. So any other questions? This has been really super helpful, Dennis, um, with everything that you've been able to bring in. Are there additional questions at this time or any that are coming in from the Facebook Live pre presentation that we need to make sure that we are answering? Sure, just for clarity, um, <clears throat> students, just to clarify, students are to schedule a time to move out with their RA. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're not given a time. Right, no, they should go up to knock on the RA's door or email or communicate and say, hey, I want to check out Tuesday at 9 o'clock in the morning. Great. And so that RA um, will expect that they will be ready to check out at 9 a.m. And so again, making sure all items are out of the space. That is really important. They will not check out a student if they still have items in the space. And so that's just something to um, keep in mind. Um, but yes, they can um, just simply follow up with the RA um, to check out um, for the academic year. Excellent. Any additional questions? Is there any additional questions one last time from the group? Dennis has done such a great job of kind of helping to ensure that you and your students, um, that your students understand the process and hopefully so that that way the conversations come in later, um, you all have a better understanding of what this process really looks like. If you do think of anything after this presentation, please know that you are more than welcome to contact the Office of Parent and Family Services. We are here to help in any way that we can. Um, I have a very easy and direct communication to Dennis. If I don't know the answer, I know how to find it, um, as well as several other things. So I wanna say thank you so much to you all for coming and participating in the webinar today. A couple of things to note, just so that you all know as family members. One, um, if you don't already, I'm, I know you've been communicating and talking with your students, but obviously final exams start next Monday. Um, so, and many students are doing final presentations, papers, and everything this week. So know that they are probably a little extra stressed and have a lot going on. So maybe some uh, kind words of encouragement with other things along those lines would be greatly appreciated. Um, the other thing is that tomorrow starts the university's 50 hours of caring event, which is a big giving day to the university. And there's a lot of great initiatives out there um, that may connect back to your student or your student's experience. Uh, one kind of big example is we are creating an emergency loan, emergency grant program for our undergraduate students. So um, UAB care, uh, 
UAB Emergency Grants and the UAB Day of Giving all starts off tomorrow. We hope that you will take part in that 50 hours of giving. Um, but again, if you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at any point in time. Um, you, we are here to help you and support you um, and, your, and your students as they go through this last couple of weeks. We're almost to the end, and I hope that you all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the week and a great, if we don't talk to you before then, a great summer ahead with your students. Thank you so very much for participating today.